morning everyone from Seoul. Just gonna do my skincare routine first. This portion of the video is sponsored by Skin and Love. I have been a big time fan of Skin and Love products. Now their recent launch, the vitamin C brightening serum, uses 15% of blend of vitamins. It mainly includes a vitamin C derivative called 3O ethyl ascorbic acid. Now a lot of you guys know that my skin gets easily irritated by pure ascorbic acid serums. That's why I always love exploring vitamin C derivative serums and this has definitely been a winner in my skincare routine for the past two months. So I've been waiting for this to be launched officially. So the form of vitamin C that they use is 3-O-ethyl ascorbic acid and I know like compared to pure ascorbic acid, the efficacy or you know it's not widely and extensively studied and researched yet. However, it is a promising derivative because it does metabolize and acts like pure ascorbic acid onto the skin and the ascorbic acid content is fairly high in the ethyl ascorbic acid um, making up up to 86.4% compared to the usual 50 to 60% of ascorbic acid content in other vitamin C derivative forms. If you are a fan of hyaluronic acid, this product also has five different weights of hyaluronic acid so it definitely hydrates your skin at the same time alongside with panthenol, hydrolyzed collagen, and also this product does have peptides called Matrixyl 3000. The serum is multifunctional. It offers skin brightening and anti-aging properties and skin hydrating properties. And if you take a closer look at the product, this does have little tiny bubbles in it. The encapsulated oil bubbles you see here are actually vitamin E capsules, which is always a good friend to vitamin C to further stabilize and enhance the efficacy of the vitamin C. Because of this, it makes the entire serum feel very nourishing and very moisturizing as well. Next, I'm going to use the Crave Beauty Great Barrier Relief as a moisturizer. Now, this has been my skin savior for the times where my skin is really irritated and sensitized and almost upset and angry at me because it's been suffocated underneath the face mask. So I would definitely experience some pesky pimples popping up here and there randomly on the spots that I would never really get pimples. So this has been really great at relieving and soothing the skin and further nourishing my skin barrier and you guys know I love tamano oil and this product is made with 10% tamano oil which is a great skin rejuvenating regenerating oil it smells so earthy so good mm. this product really does provide that kind of reset button that your skin needs at times I love going back to Great Barrier Relief whenever my skin is just freaking out. So now sunscreen. I'm just using the Beat the Sun lap sample. It's been a while ever since I've done any kinds of Q and A's, so I had a lot of you guys submit great questions, and one particular question actually did stand out, and it was from Chanel. What was your experience like moving from Korea to the States? Pros and cons, or just things that you miss from Korea? Question mark. I don't think I've ever actually elaborated or explained why I decided to move to New York City. Um, it was a very conscious decision that I did have to make after living in Korea for such a long time. A lot of you guys don't know that I'm actually a pure Korean born and raised. I'm not a Korean American. I just moved to New York City three years ago and I'm living off of visa. So that said, I know that Seoul is always going to be my hometown. When I was nearing 30, I knew that I wanted to take some ownership of my life and be in the driver's seat of my life. At some point, I felt like I was growing out of the size of where the soul can capture my dreams and my vision. And I wanted to be really conscious about the people that I'm surrounded by, the, envir the environment that I place myself into, and Seoul just felt a little bit too comfortable and I was afraid at one point of being a little bit too stagnant and I was still in my 20s so I really wanted something more stimulating, something more challenging. My life in Seoul at the time was pretty much like a car on a cruise control on a highway like it's very smooth and easy. Your life would go on without like trying too hard. Compared to then like Seoul right now the startup scene here is much more vibrant but back then there was really no one that I can vibe with or that I can feed energy off of. New York City was always a place that I was really fascinated by. It's 
Every time I visit New York, it really broadens my world perspective. I was just fascinated by the diversity and people, how they dress and how they truly express their unique colors and their personalities. A lot of New Yorkers are actually not from New York. They come to New York, they move to New York to pursue their dreams, to accomplish things, and they're really driven, ambitious. And I think that's one thing that I really wanted to be surrounded by every time i meet new people in new york city like they're crazy they they really challenge myself to think in a different way of course new york city now and then like now meaning post pandemic it looks completely different it has a very different vibe and atmosphere in the city but still it's it's the city that i feel like it's right for me at this very moment in my life like who knows down the road like where i'll be kimberly asked if i could share a little bit more about my career journey now by the time this vlog goes up i'm pretty sure the episode the podcast interview that i've done with the asian boss girl ladies i love them i adore them so much the episode will be probably up so i'll link it down below in the description box so you can check it out the episode is pretty much about me explaining my career journey how i started from graduating college with a design degree having worked in the beauty industry and having YouTube as a full-time career and then pivoting to have my own business create PD. So I hope that's helpful. Christina asked, Hey Leah, as a non-business grad and an entrepreneur of one of the fastest growing companies, thank you, have you ever felt the need to get an MBA? I think there is um, sometimes like an insecurity of not having the business degree or not having the right degree per se to be running a company but at the same time just because you have an MBA doesn't mean that you are going to be so equipped to run a company I think just running the company and doing everything and experiencing everything in real life is pretty much like what you would learn from an MBA course probably down the road if I feel like the business is growing to a scale where I do need a proper education or a qualification I think that's when I will be doing but I don't think I'm like degree hungry at this point okay now i'm gonna enjoy my very first weekend off work it took me over two months to have a final proper weekend and our digital marketing manager from new york he came to seoul he did his two weeks quarantine and today is his freedom day finally so we're gonna spend some time together catch up because i haven't seen him for the past several months so we'll, we'll have a lot to catch up on i'll show him around the city and yeah i'll take you guys along beautiful figure out to get on this electric kickboard. Look how pretty is this? into the office it was a great sunday i just finished um doing a webinar a skincare beauty science panel with the ecoel and amazing amazing skincare experts and professionals from all over the community so definitely check the live video out but yeah it's almost close to midnight so i need to go home and get the week started for tomorrow so i'll see you guys soon <laughs> 